Welcome to my presentation on uh, Dapper, um, which we used in, at iHomer for a product that we developed for a customer of ours. Um, yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm uh, Michiel, and um, again, I'm, I'm passionate about Microsoft since 2004. I'm 43 years old. Um, working in .NET Core of .NET framework before that, since 2004. Um, worked as a developer architect for multiple companies, larger companies uh, within the Netherlands. And I was mainly responsible for a couple of big uh, companies that uh, for their public facing websites or some insurance companies and a energy company. Um, I love tech. I uh, not only programming, also other stuff like taking things apart, uh, working on servers, working on cars, whatever. Um, I'm very busy with my family life. I have two beautiful daughters, Kate and Olivia, and I like to ride a bike when I have some time off to get my head uh, clear, etc., etc. Um, and I'm passionate about helping students with. Um, with getting into um, an academy program that we have at IOMA. Um, and before IOMA, IOMA was, I was a, a teacher at a bachelor university, or called a, a hogeschool in the Netherlands, um, in Breda. And since two years, I'm working for IOMA as a consultant. So, who is IOMA? Um, yeah, we are with uh, 50 plus consultants within our company in the Netherlands. Um, mainly only software engineers and UX designers. And uh, what we are, we're all participants in our company. So we don't have any directors or managers or um, uh, HR departments or whatever. We're just driving this company with, with 50 people. Um, and as a basic, that's what an iHome stands for. We had a uh, an home shoring uh, approach, and that means that uh, we only work from home, or at least most of the time we work from home. And that's before the Corona crisis. So uh, um, we had a standard like 15 years ago um, that we have an opinion that we can always work um, from a place that is nearest to us, and that's home. Um, try to work in short in sh teams with short lines and uh, we try to prioritize our humans as first um, and also very close contact with our customers so uh, it's not about money and and, and uh, driving uh, profit it's about getting the correct um, project done for our customers with our customers um, today I'm going to talk to you about a customer case that we built for uh, for a customer of ours. Um, unfortunately, I cannot tell you about uh, the name of the company, but I can tell you what the solution is that we that we have built. Um, it's because of NDA reasons that we cannot uh, mention the customer. Um, it's a customer which operates in the in the small to medium business market, and. Um, when a, another company needs money or an investment for their for their business, this company will help you to realize your financing. Um, and and after when the financing is uh, realized via a crowdfunding uh, kind of way, um, the funding is realized. Then then investors who have a, a sort of stake or share or certificate or whatever you call it in a company, they can trade with those stakes and those shares. Um, and that's special about this company because it's not standard that you can trade afterwards after you um, did a crowdfunding kind of thing. So we build a, a, a trading platform for them. Um, and what's important for, for them is that they that everything is in the right order and it's all correct and consistent. Um, so you can realize that if you do a trading like like, um, when I'm trading for a certain share or another person is also trading for the same share, it's important that, that the timing of these shares is correct and that, that there's no, um, um, how do you call it, there's no gap between 
having money or don't having money or having shares or shares are gone or whatever. It needs to be correct and consistent. And it needs to be traceable and auditable. Um, one of the requirements is that it should be in Azure and it should be in .NET, or at least not fully in .NET, but um, it should be in a Microsoft technology stack because the company is working with Microsoft systems um, and they want to keep the stack as, as close to their other systems as possible. Um, so we chose for .NET Core because it's the latest uh, um, .NET stack, of course. And we chose for Azure Container Apps. When we start a new project for our customers, um, we always try to define a sort of new mission statement, ambition, uh, what this product does and what this product is meant for. Um, and together with our UX designers, we try to come up with a plan which is iterative with, with uh, designing a product and then developing it. Um, so that we get the, the, the best result for our customers. Um, because it's it's a it's a trading system, we we figured out that that um, we can use domain driven design, so DDD, um, and we use the process is called event storming to determine uh, which actors are in the system, which um, domains are there, and eventually which microservices exist within the within, it, within the solution um, so based on that we can write define actors aggregates commands like create an account or deposit cash or uh, having an instrument and from there we can create views or projections that the, that the user or the actor can see and can interact with so why Depper? yeah that's interesting. We started with a team um, of about five people, five developers. And I started with two colleagues of mine who are very enthusiastic Java developers, so no .NET developers. And in Spin Zero, we, we defined, okay, we need to build an event-driven system. Also in the design phase with, with the event storming, we figured out it needs to be event-driven. Um, and those two Java developers had experience with Axon, and Axon is a uh, event-driven system, uh, event, um, event-driven system. <clears throat> so we were on the hunt for in .NET to have a sort of event-driven system uh, or framework which we can use for building the solution. And at first glance, we couldn't find something that was similar to Axon, or at least they couldn't find we couldn't find something that is that is that's very uh, similar and behaves like Axon. Um, so the two Java developers were like, okay, we can create it ourselves and we create a .NET framework and we'll, we'll try to build one like an open source framework or something and build something new. On the other hand, me is like, okay, I have 20 years of development experience in .NET. Uh, I heard about Dapper and I said, okay, I will set up the infrastructure and we'll use Dapper for for the infrastructure because I thought it was cool and I I wanted to work with this framework because of the microservices and the the service calls etc. But I wasn't that experienced with with Dapper at all. Um, and after a couple of sprints of them develop, developing a framework and me developing the infrastructure, we figured out that the actor framework in within Dapper might be a perfect fit for our event-driven, event-based system. So after a couple of sprints, we figured out, okay, this finally is the, the best way forward. So we stopped developing a framework and we created everything on the actor framework of Dapper. Uh, next, I want to talk to you about the, the architecture that we um, built and, and designed during building. Um, and we use ice panel for a, a sort of overview of that architecture. And next slide, I will show you a video of our architecture. So what you hear here is, an, is the, the first level of the architecture. And you see the two actors, investor and employee, and some external systems like Dynamics 365 and our step, frame, step system, which comp 
complies of a lot of microservices which you see in the background. And when you zoom in on a, on a microservice, you see the dependencies that they have on the other components that we have. So in a key vault, um, service bus, events, etc., and some external events that they need to uh, question. Um, we also have a blueprint, which is a sort of what can happen if all is implemented, kind of standard thingy. And what you hear here is our CQRS um, mutation stuff running through the system. So from a mutation, we call the position service and mutation calls an aggregate and it's routed to the event bus and to an event dispatcher. And this dispatcher can send to multiple uh, subscribers like event handler or a saga manager and can send those events to the database and that database uh, saves the projection and that can be queried via the query of CoffQL into our back office. And of course, um, every event that is created is stored in an event database. So that's just a flat table of events. Um, next up, I want to, um, I've recorded a, a demo for you guys to see how the system, some functionality is implemented and see uh, what what our system does at, at least. Um, we have two actors in here. That is a um, uh, an investor, which is uh, Bob, and we have Alice, which is an employee of the company, and is a, has the back office. So I will start now the demo. Now here see all the the services that has, have health checks on them and see if they're healthy. And the, the interesting, the last one is the gateway, and the gateway is a um, a stitch up of all our microservices into one GraphQL service at the front. Next slide, I will talk to you about how stitching works, etc. When I uh, get my password right, we log in as Alice as a back office employee. <coughs> and in this back office, you can manage um, all of our, our issuers, so companies who have uh, shares. And next, I will log in as, uh, as a portal. Sign out Alice and log in with Bob. Alice and Bob, the traditional uh, users within the. Uh... <laughs> okay, so uh, first we go into the back office. And what you hear here is all the, 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 the different screens that we have. And um, every um, screen is just a yeah an overview of, of items that you can manage. So financial instruments are like shares. Uh, offerings are like um, new openings to uh, um, issue a new share. Uh, trading is, of course, something that you can do afterwards. You have have a, an offering created. And shares are like in in yeah can be sold, etc. Non working days, um, so which days are closed, and uh, this is also important trading hours because you can only trade between ten o'clock and four o'clock uh, in the evening. Um, account information. And these are, are exactly are actually our position accounts, and this is the ZJCN. That's the company itself. It's not actually that name, but we renamed it, of course. Um, and this has a, um, a cash position or a instrument position. So how much cash is in your account, and how much it's like a bank account, but then in a soft virtual way, and which contains um, issues and uh, cash. Okay, I'm going to create an offering now um, and we'll show you that there's no um, position yet available. Oh, okay, <laughs> forgot about this. I wanted to show you uh, what the initial state is between the services and how they communicate. Just with Sipkin, this is a standard uh, thing that we, uh, we implemented in, in our solution, just to see the overview of uh, all of the services that are in interconnected with each other. So you see a lot of lines. <coughs> it's mainly uh, health checks because there's no actual events happening yet. And we'll just now add an instrument to this um, to this conference company. And we'll add a hundred items. Okay. After refresh, you don't see anything. But after refresh, you see a position. That's the hundred. 
and you see um, one mutation that something is added to this position account. Position account of conference, we know. So conference is creating a new offering and it has um, uh, no subscriptions yet. So what we do now is uh, Bob will create a subscription on this. We'll see in his, his position account that he has 100,000 euros, but no uh, instruments yet. So he now will subscribe on this offering. And he will get 30 items, 30 shares. Okay, he subscribed. And what you see now is that there is uh, only one subscription now, which is just created, had a state of created. And we'll now just confirm the subscription. So Bob actually really wants this and he confirms that he has 30 subscriptions. But there's no reservation yet. There's only a subscription. There's nothing closed yet. So we'll, we'll move on now in the back office again. And we go to the offering. And we will close the offering now because it's now open. So everything is um, done and, and all of the shares are, are subscribed and we can now close the offering. <clears throat> and what you now see is that there is a reservation of 30. Um, and we confirm that There's, there are a couple of steps between in between the process of, of confirming and, and um, having the, the subscription. It's not fully confirmed yet or closed processed yet. So it's only reserved now that the money is reserved and there's no instruments yet traded or changed accounts. It's only 3000 euros is, is uh, reserved. Now we process it. And this means that the actual money is transferred from the one account to the other account and that the instrument is also being transferred. This, this is now done, completed, yes. And what you see now at Bob's side, I think, oh, maybe I will show the transaction. So you see the different position account from and to. And what you see here is that there is um, no, nothing reserved anymore, but there is 3,000 euros deducted from my position, but also uh, 30 euros 3,000 euros goes to the conference company and 30 euros goes to the to the to the um, the company itself, which I cannot say the name of. The the in this case it's ZJCN. So he gets 30 euros. And the conference company has 3,000 euros. And 30 stocks less. Because it had a hundred as an as an as a base and 30, ones, 30 was deducted from it. So that was our demo. Now, uh, I'll show you the, the, the Zipkin again, because, uh, 11 o'clock of course, it's very strange to see my demo again. <laughs> and you see now that there are a lot of um, um, actors created uh, within the, the, the process of, of everything. So uh, every time a, uh, position account is is touched or an offering is touched then there is an actor created to manage the the state of that 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 thing so a position account is an aggregate in our system position account of pop in this case but that 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 keeps alive until yeah whatever whenever in time so every time bob uh, buys something or sells something or uh, um then this is position account is being modified. So that's the interesting thing about uh, this actor uh, framework. Okay, I'll go to the next slide for you. So which type of components did we use? So a lot of things that we did is actors. So all of our aggregates and um, we also have sagas and saga managers are all actors in, in our system. Uh, they, they have state, so if you use a state store, State store. <clears throat> Locally, we use Redis, and in Azure, also also Redis. Um, but for instance, PubSub is locally on RabbitMQ, and in Azure Container Apps, it's Azure Service Bus. Um, we heavily rely on the, uh, of course, on the on the on the, on the PubSub, 
and um, on configuration. So all the configuration settings are stored in uh, app config within Azure and within Redis on the local side. <coughs> Um, and we also re use, use reminders to, uh, for instance, to, <clears throat> we call it, um, to, to get a sort of, for instance, that offering has, a, has an expiration of 30 days. So we need to set a reminder that after 30 days, the state is changed from open to closed because the reminder pushes that to, to closed. Um, distributed log is also one thing that we're not implemented yet, but we need to implement it because of the, uh, the locking set mechanisms that we need for our solution. <clears throat> so, um, oh, my, my head is again in the way. <laughs> CQRS and GraphQL are a perfect fit for us. So we use GraphQL uh, for our commands and queries, and that's a direct match to mutations and projections in our uh, CQRS framework. And we use, use hot chocolate as a um, GraphQL solution in our system. And now I will start a demo, or at least a, a video, about our solution and how, how our solution is built up. So you see API gateways, which is, contains really an Envoy and a an stitching API of GraphQL. Um, we have building blocks, uh, services, and a front end, which is contained in the web project. Um, yeah, we will now zoom into the uh, to the services and we go to the position accounts and I will show you the CQRS steps that that we follow when a mutation is, is created. We go to the mutation and we add a cash deposit. And what you see is that there there is a um, the first we, we get the, the current aggregate. So Bob's aggregate is getting from the state management and, and read into the memory of this service. And we handle the cache command. And the cache command is handled within the aggregate. And in this case, we get a command inside of our method and um, we check if the, the state is, if the, the, the aggregate is still created or open. And we send an event to our event service, to our event source aggregate. And this event source aggregate um, is, an, is a building block within our, so every, every service uses this. And this will um, uh, persist our uh, event into the database of all the events, just a flat table of events, which is stored in, in JSON, etc. And we publish the event to our event bus. And the topic name is actually the, the name of the aggregate that the event is published to. <laughs> yeah, and the, the pub sub name, that's the, the name within Dapper that knows which event bus we use. <clears throat> then we have a, a, on the controller side, we have an event dispatcher, which gets all of the um, uh, events that are coming from the event pub sub. So we subscribe to this pops up and we have an event listener. And in this case, uh, we only have one event listener. You can have multiple. And we handle this event to just write to the database into the position account table. And I think we also write down the mutation. What's important to, to realize is that um, on the publish event dispatcher, um, you can only subscribe once on a topic within Dapper. Um, in this case, we only have one event handler listening to this to this event from the from the pops up mechanism. But uh, in our CQRS system, we need sometimes uh, multiple uh, listeners to to listen to certain events. So we, we uh, created this component, this event dispatcher, to dispatch events to different services. Okay, in this case, I will show you one that has, that has multiple. So in this case, the confirmed subscription. Um, 
So we go to the handle subscription of the offering aggregate. And uh, we check if it's, it's still a valid subscription and then if it's still created and not closed. Um, and we create an event for that, just a subscription confirmed event. Oh no, this is the standard uh, created event uh, uh, stuff. So it's, uh, it's sent to the event service, etc. And then the event dispatcher um, for this case is, is called. So the subscription confirmed event dispatcher. And we have a offering subscription event handler, which is just written to the database. And the other one is the um, reserve cash position saga manager, which handles um, our, our position accounts. So we go to the implementation and we see here that we are um, getting the, the event itself, get it from the state because we need that to get some uh, values like the position account ID and, and some other uh, stuff that we need. And um, based on that position account, we get the position aggregate. So in this case, maybe Bob with that ID. And we handle the reserve. Um, and this reserve, this handling, this checks if there's sufficient uh, uh, cash cash in this account and if it's not closed it again. And if it's succeeded, then it's confirmed and it will stop with the method and it will stop. If it's not, um, if it doesn't have enough cash, it will continue and will send out a rejection. As talked about in our previous video that I showed you, we have a um, a gateway API, uh, which acts as a sort of proxy in between our uh, front end and our services, our microservices, um, that stitches up all of our microservices into one big API towards the, the front end. And in this case, uh, we can uh, stitch up two services that have uh, a sort of connection to each other. Like uh, an order has a, an order service has a financial instrument ID. And I want the name of that financial instrument also in that schema of that order service. Um, and that's that's doable with this, this stitching solution. And that uh, helps us in preventing having multiple inter-service calls between services and keep the services isolated from each other. Um, what I wanted to tell about is that we also added some things to the actors. Um, we created a sort of generic class stop actor, which is uh, based on the actor framework, but something extra. And in this way, we can uh, create unit tests, which are very, very important for event-based system because um, we need to uh, be certain that all of our commands and events are handled well. Um, and for this one, we needed to add some mocked state manager to, to mock the state manager before we do a test. And in that way, we can create small tests for all of our commands to be handled correctly. So that's an interesting thing that we can, that I can mention. Um, now we're reaching the end now. Um, yeah, this, this platform is now um, underway for about a year now. And in the first year, we did a lot of um, sort of proof of concepts. And the solution that you just saw was already like uh, multiple proof of concepts together. So the offering, the trading, uh, all of these, these mechanisms we needed to, to try out with our solution. And we're actually now building upon this solution, uh, actually creating a new solution and moving all of those parts that we just created into our new solution. And uh, we're finalizing a MVP for this year for this company. Um, but we see at, at IOMA, we see other opportunities also for, for these kind of frameworks. Um, because, of course, Dapper is not only .NET, but can also be used for other languages and other frameworks. So we really see a lot of potential in that. And I'd like to thank you for your time and your attention for this presentation. Um, so if any questions arrive, then uh, the future me will answer them. Thank you. Bye-bye.